This will be the City Council workshop meeting for January 6, 2016, as followed by the regular meeting. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. I'd like to call to order a workshop meeting of the City Council of Satellite Beach, January 6, 2016, approximately 6.50. Uh, the reason for this meeting is to interview the board applicant, Kelly Palace. Kelly, if you would please just take a seat over there. Okay. <laughs> so thank you for applying for the board. Uh, we appreciate it very much. And if you uh, well, just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you applied for the boards. Okay, and sure. Thank you. Um, I am a 10-year resident of the beach side. I've lived in Indian Harbor Beach, but uh, some of you may know we just built a home in Satellite Beach, so we're Satellite Beach residents, very excitedly. Um, I have, uh, I'm at a place in my life where I'd like to do some volunteer work, and I... I'm a realtor. I've always been very involved in um, wherever I'm living, making it a, a better place. Um, one of my things that you might have noticed that I've done in Satellite Beach is I served as the president of the homeowners association, or not home, but business owners association of Sea Park Plaza there. And if you remember what an eyesore that was, um, when I got elected president, it was we had a, our real estate office in that complex and it was just an embarrassment every time someone came to see us. So if you recall, we repaved the parking lot, did the stripes, planted a bunch of things, painted everything, put up a $25,000 sign. Um, and as the president of that HOA for a couple of years, we actually got our finances from the, the red into the black. So um, that's one thing I've done. I've also you know, that was in Satellite Beach um, Palace Properties International, which I co-own with my husband, Mark. We have been Adopt-A-Highway um, members, and we clean up uh, a mile of Satellite Beach every quarter. So you probably see our name on the sign there, um, Palace Properties. Um, so I'm just, you know, willing to serve, wanting to um, improve whatever city that I'm living in, and I'm... I'm my first choice, which I've run on my application, is to be on the beautification committee because I have um, a little, well, I, I, it's just more of my passion to design and improve things, but I am also uh, have a master's degree in, in physical education and sports management and uh, was a Division I coach for 10 years, so um, I would think the recreation committee would also be another um, board that I would be well suited to serve on, but I, you know, I, I'm just ready to do some service, and uh, that's a little bit about me. Thank you very, very much. Um, questions for council? Someone like to start? Mm -hmm. The beautification board meets at nine o'clock on a Friday morning. Is that uh, a compatible that's, time? Yes, that you'll that's be compatible. Able to? Yes. Okay, good. That's. I also, um, I'm a swimming pool contractor, and I was also involved in the Florida Swimming Pool Association, and we host the largest swimming event uh, for uh, high school students in the state. So uh, awesome. I thought that was pretty neat that you were a coach. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've been uh, talking with Brenda Salmon a little bit at the high school, and she's doing a great job there and really enjoy it. You know, I'd like to do some volunteering with some, some swimming, but uh, that, yeah, that's another passion. Well, you, can only, you can only juggle so many yes, exactly. balls yeah. at one time. But thank you for wanting to uh, contribute to Satellite Beach. Um, we're volunteers just like the people that sit on our board. So uh, thank you, guys. Thank you. How strong is your preference to be on the beautification board? Um, I would say you know, maybe 70% to 30%. But I, I really, you know, I like to be where I'm needed as well. So um, if the beautification board is full of great people and they don't need anybody, then and the recreation board does, then I certainly have. Um, Actually, we need a primary member on each of those boards, but as I have been listening to you speak and reading your application, it, it, you just seem to be such a strong candidate for the recreation board, but you know better than I, you know, which yeah. you would be better suited to. Um, 
my preference would be to see you on recreation. I don't think we have any women on that board, do we? No, and also if we look at the, and let me you, uh, the um, agenda here on 15, I think we're three me primary members down on the rec board. And only one on And only one on the beautification, so if, you know. How does recreation <laughs> I'm in. I, I, I will serve where I think I could make them the most, be the most helpful. Um, and I appreciate your uh, resubmitting your application. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was going to be my only comment. Obviously, we were a little shy there on the recreation. And as you said, where you be needed, that's someplace we're really needed. So I think, you, I think you would make a big game. on both boards or not? No, you can no. serve on one board at a time. However, it's not a lifelong commitment, yeah. so. When does the recreation board meet? I think that was one possible challenge for me. I was just looking for and I don't have that. In fact, I can tell you right now, I got it right second now. Tuesday? Second Tuesday? Yeah. Tuesdays, I know they're not. Second, second Tuesday. Second Tuesday, second Tuesday at 6.15. Tuesday. At 6.15. Yeah. Is that a problem? Um, I don't think so. I'm trying to think of something. I'm taking a class, but I think it's on the Wednesday evening. Um, but I, I don't think that'll be a problem. But I know the Friday morning wasn't, but I don't think that'll be a problem. How long do they usually meet for? Um, it generally doesn't take any more than an hour at the most. Okay, and then that should be fun. Actually, on here it says 6.15 is what, what time they meet. That's what I said. Oh, okay. Second Tuesday. Second Tuesday, 6.15. I just want to say, Kelly, thank you for applying. It's great to have a, this caliber of volunteerism coming into the community. I know you're going to fit in great, and we're just... You know, welcome to Satellite Beach. Thank you. We're thrilled to be Satellite Beach residents. And make an impact, okay? Yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much, and I hope you like Shell Street. We love it. In fact, <laughs> I'll tell you guys a little bit of beautification. We've got a New York City artist. He has done beautiful murals all over New York City. He was in 9-11. He's been in the paper. He lives across the street from us on Shell Street, and we just hired him to paint our seawall. Oh, cool. So it's going to get painted on the beach there, and I'm trying to get a story in Florida today about it. Not about me. I don't want. I don't want to be in the story, but I, I think he should be profiled because he's he's an amazing resident of Satellite Beach, and uh, so walk the beach there and check it out. In maybe about a month. Thank you. And Kelly, if we appoint you to the Recreation Board, you're still always welcome to attend the Beautification Board uh, meetings and provide your input. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? No. Okay. This time I'll adjourn the meeting, and we'll start the regular council meeting in a few minutes. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. I'd like to call to order a regular meeting of the City Council of Satellite Beach, January 6, 2016, approximately 7 p.m. Please join me in a moment of silence and the pledge. Presentation to recognize a public works employee for 30 years of incredible service to our city. And Al Good evening, and, and thank you all for, for being here. The folks that I know that are here to, to embarrass Robert tonight. <laughs> and believe me, Knowing Robert the way I do, I know that this is the last place he wants to be only because he's not the guy who wants to be recognized. He's the guy that wants to sit in the background, do his job, and do a good job, and make sure that the city's taken care of, and he does that on a daily basis. Um, I've worked with Robert for 27 years. He's a little my senior. As far as that goes, as far as the, the longevity here, but um, we've gotten to know each other very well over those years. Sometimes there were good times, and sometimes there were bad times. <laughs> but um, there, 
I think we've both grown to appreciate and to respect um, each other. And, um, oh, voice is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, Robert is one of those kind of guys that is a mentor. He takes the younger guys under his wing and teaches them the ropes and makes sure that tries to instill in, him, in them the pride and the professionalism and the quality um, that he expects of himself and he wants to let them know that he expects that of them. So um, I'm very proud to be here today to, uh, <laughs> to do this um, because I love the man. So with that, I'll turn it over to the man. <laughs> Robert was on watch. So I'm just gonna go. <laughs> um, wow. I mean, I've never in a million years ever believed I'd be here. You get to do it. Thank you. I, I really can't remember when I haven't known Robert. So um, it's been a, an incredible number of years. Uh, I remember him running around a restaurant giving his parents a hard time. But he's always been a great friend, an incredible employee of the city. So, I'm going to call you Bert, because I've called you Bert all my life. Please come up. <laughs> okay. Presented to Robert Settembrino, in recognition of 30 years of loyal service to our city and our public works department where your dedicated efforts have helped to maintain the appearance and safety of our city and accomplish complex infrastructure projects always willing to help where needed you have proven yourself as a mentor a mature leader and a standard of excellence for your co-workers you have helped make satellite beach a better place and we thank you presented by the Satellite Beach, Beach City Council, January 6, 2016. <laughs> so I'll give you your watch back. You've been a real nice service. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, and anybody that knows Bird, he'll do anything in the world for you. And uh, wonderful to call that. <laughs> We're giving out your cell phone. Right? And I have one more presentation to make. <laughs> we don't really know his name. <laughs> All right. And this is a presentation to our councilman, Steve Osmer, um, of the John Scott Daly Florida Institute of Government and the Florida League of Cities Certificate of Completion of the Institute for Elected Municipal Officials. And Steve took this class. It's a very comprehensive class in Tampa on October 9th through the 11th, 2015, and we'll give him this certificate and thank him for taking the class. And thanks, Steve. Um, started coming a couple years ago to all our meetings and really fit into our city and has been a great councilman and a great person to work with. So thank you for doing this. <laughs> Okay, thank you. The next agenda item, five citizens' comments. This is for non-agenda items. So the floor is open for non-agenda items. We love you guys. See you guys. Bert, thanks. See you in 30. See you in 30. All right. Great. Okay, public citizens' comments. Here and not close that portion. City council comments. So you'd like to start? No, other than, uh, you know, it's great to be back to a new year. Um, I had a lot of time off. 
during the holidays, got to travel around the city. It seemed like I was constantly running into uh, not only council members, but uh, lots of families and residents stuff. Everybody seemed to be enjoying themselves. Um, I have met a lot of people that are actually came from out of town to Satellite Beach to look at Christmas lights. Um, had a few people comment on that. Um, had quite a few uh, great comments about, um, according to talking about, about the uh, open house at the fire department. Um, even as of yesterday, people were still talking about how they felt that was a great community event. And obviously, as you know, I walked over there and ran many people there. It, it was an awesome thing over there. Great family fun. A lot of happy people. Um, it was nice. So it was it's nice. I think over the holidays to really enjoy a nice small community feel to it. And uh, part of when I, as I wrote the thing for the Beachcaster, that's kind of what my intention was to to talk about all the great people that we have here in Satellite Beach and, and the schools and the different organizations and, and, you know, that again, that small community feel. It was really great. So I, I had a really good time. It was really nice. Uh, good to be back to work. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of comments, or one comment, I guess, to Courtney. I've been down to Cheryl Street twice during the break here. Nice job. That has really turned out well, and you can just see people really enjoying that. But uh, just congratulations to you and your team. What a nice job, and thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Stephen Holder, welcome back. Good to see you again. <laughs> I know that in the uh, city manager's report, we've included the really favorable emails we received about Officer Hausman, Officer Williamson, and another officer who was not named. Um, to each of these officers, thank you. And to all of our employees who make the city look so good every day, thank you. And I also want to mention um, Colonel Bud Meyer, who's also uh, in the city manager's report, uh, Colonel Meyer is both a World War II and a Korean War veteran. Uh, so he's a truly remarkable man as well as being one of the nicest people you'd ever want to meet. And he's been a real stalwart for this city, so it was nice to see him uh, single out. Thank you. Thank you. It was a busy December, and it's good to be back to work, as Steve said. But um, there were a lot of things that I was doing, but there's three things that I want to talk about. One was the, um, the police volunteers um, luncheon that I attended. And I'll tell you what, we have a great group of police volunteers in our city that go out, visit people's homes um, when they're not there to make sure that things are okay. Um, they're a stop by and say hi program. Um, is wonderful. They have people like Bill Spiegelhalter who drive around in police cars and just keep our neighborhood safe and follow around what's going on in the city. But it was great to be there, and I, you know, I, I made it a point to make sure that we thanked all of our volunteers from the city council. I also attended the employees' Christmas party, and once again, congratulations to to, to you and in, in putting on a great event for the employees and. Um, Frank was there, and um, it was it was really nice to be able to spend some time with our employees and thank them for all they do for our city. So, um, and then the last thing was the Jingle Bell Two Mile Run. Um, that was uh, I think on the 19th of December, and it was started at the library. There were over 2,000 people walking and running down to Soto Parkway, and I know that had to be a challenge for not only. Uh, our police department, but probably public works and everybody else that was involved. It was a great event, and uh, it's nice to be back to work. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, just want to thank Al, thank your crew for Shell Street. Um, came out great. And really the Allisons also for working together with our city. I think that's a great example of how you know, the city works well with businesses, and we come out with a very nice project. And John, too, thank you very much for the project. Um, city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Happy New Year to all of you. Um, I did. I was going to talk about the Jingle Bell Run, but um, Councilman Montanero took that one from me. And I was going to talk about the fire department. 
um, open house, but um, Councilman Dave Osmer took that away from me. Um, so I'll just talk about the recreation classes that we have for free this coming January. So if you are wanting to, um, you know, dive in without wanting to pay for anything <laughs> and try one out, you can do that um, this month. So just go up to our recreation department at the Schechter Center and sign up and you will be able to take one of those classes for free. Um, in terms of informational items, I did include a letter um, in, from me, as well as a letter from our city attorney, to the county's charter review committee um, opposing a proposal from one of the board um, or committee members that would um, impose a 3% um, revenue limitation on all cities as well even as even the school board. Um, so we, we submitted our objections to that. I'm not sure how that's going. Um, we'll be, they have their next meeting tomorrow at 4 o'clock, or 3 o'clock, I'm sorry, that I'll be attending, and we'll see where that goes. Um, I also wanted to um, point out some thank you notes that we have in, our, in my packet. Um, we, we get so many, sometimes I hope I include them all, um, but I, we've been getting quite a few regarding public works lately. Um, especially with Shell Street and that project and how it was managed. Um, we do have for Shell Street um, a grand opening on January 28th that we have planned from 5 to 7. Um, the um, owner of the plaza, uh, Mr. Allison, is um, working with some of his business owners to provide the food um, and a band. Um, and then the city, we're looking into what we're going to be doing, but we're wanting to do a ribbon cutting. Um, and hopefully we'll have the signage from, um, you know, the, um, thanking the Women's Club and things like that um, ready by then. So, again, that will be on January 28th from 5 to 7. I'll send you out an email notice to make sure you, you know that. I did also want to include some information. I, I gave you a copy of a Facebook post I just put t together today. We've been getting a lot of phone calls because our residents are seeing the news reports and the Facebook postings from the Indian Harbor Beach residents regarding their coyote. Uh, um, it's kind of hard for me to say this with a straight face, but we're not used to seeing coyotes in our, our beachside communities. But it's unfortunate that, that one um, owner has already lost a pet and that he's, you know, obviously upset about it. Um, so we have called Indian Harbor Beach. Um, we did um, come to an agreement that we would assist in the cost of, of, of the um, professional trapper, particularly if they had to move any traps towards our city. Um, so they're, right now they're limiting their efforts to the Gleason Park and Algonquin area. But if they have to move it close to the library or anything like that, then we'll be assisting in that, in that endeavor. And then I posted their post from their police department's website updating their residents on that um, item. So, um, again, coyotes are... Um, you know, they come out mostly at night, so we're just re warning our residents to keep their, your pets inside during this time so they don't get attacked by a coyote. Um, and then, of course, the post has generated comments like, you know, are you sure this wasn't a fox? Because I saw one on leaves. <laughs> uh, we may hear about other wildlife that we don't know about during this period of time. So, um, I did include as an action item in your packet a, um, a information regarding um, a potential bill, it's currently a committee bill, regarding municipal elections. Um, the Florida League of Cities is opposing this bill, and I think even the uh, Supervisor of Elections Association is opposing this as well. Um, at, and it gives considerable powers to the Supervisor of Elections in setting municipal elections, um, but they're even um, opposing the bill. The bill itself does not um, impact our city greatly, um, but if you wanted to change your election dates, it would. It would. <laughs> um, therefore, we're requesting um, your permission to have on the next agenda an, a city resolution opposing the bill, um, and so that would be on your January 20th. Thank you. Um, question, do, do we just need consensus on yeah, that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, but since it's an action item, I need to open the floor for public comment. Hearing none, council, consensus? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, and that's all I have. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Roosevelt is starting. So you'll see, you'll see the signs go up. Um, you'll see, you've already seen surveys, surveying crews out there. Um, we will be posting uh, email blasts um, in the next couple days. And I will be posting it to my Facebook page, so we'll let you know when that happens. So I'm sure you'll get some phone calls from that. Thank you. 
Okay. What end are they starting on, Alan? They're starting on the west end okay. because they want to tear the um, sidewalk up from the panel. Sorry. The west end because they want to um, tear the, the four foot sidewalk up and use that sidewalk as they will crush that and use that as a base for the road so they will have something to work with um, a little later on. Um, Robert and I have been both working with um, some Massey folks trying to determine exactly what the game plan is for them and it seems I believe they'll, they'll be getting um, going pretty heavily next week. Right now it's survey crews looking for the right of way lines and, and things like that, making sure it was marked out. I've had uh, conversations with a few uh, residents via email and um, you know I'll be reaching out to a couple other folks that have concerns that didn't feel that they were contacted, but um, we'll straighten that out and uh, we'll make sure everybody's happy. Thank you very much. Any questions? I, just one. I noticed that um, the power company that is doing the lines has moved kind of north of the city now. Are they pretty much done with running stuff in the city and are we going to wait for them to come and pull whatever poles they're going to be pulling out? Is that what the plan is? You know, I'm not really sure about that. That because they're on the state, the state road, they are not being real uh, forthcoming with information. We've had to try to pull what information that we can garner from them. We had to pull it out of them. Um, I was coming here tonight and actually had uh, South Patrick was blocked off. I had to go around through the um, through the housing area and and come to A1A and come in that way because they had the road closed, and we weren't notified. I, so, I think he said the water main broke. I, yeah, a message I got was the water main at Shearwater broke, or well, near was, Shearwater. Yeah, it wasn't near, it wasn't at Shearwater, and all that. I didn't see any water vehicles out there. The only things I saw were electrical vehicles. So. And the light at Jackson was out. Yeah. yeah so so that, that has been the issue. We've had to contact them. And the first time we contacted them, they said, well, we've, um, you, we've, we pulled a permit, so you should know all this. And I had to remind them that the permit was through FDOT, not the city of Satellite Beach. So then they gave us a kind of an outline of what they were doing, but we don't know the timeline. So we can call, I'll call tomorrow and give you an update on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Before you move on, I would just like to um, say thank you to Attorney Beadle for the letter that you wrote regarding um, the proposed uh, uh, kind of charter, uh, amendment. Good job. Thank you. Okay, ready? Moving on to agenda item eight. Discuss, take action on the revised IAFF contract. Courtney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we, we understand that we brought this to you in October. Um, once we had approved this contract, we realized that there were several provisions that we negotiated with the union. Um, but had never actually TA'd, so they were not included in this revision. Um, therefore, we, have to, we had to go back and redo that. Um, the one revision that is actually a, um, a budget impact um, has to do with overtime, and we basically adjusted the practices of the fire department um, to match the practices of the rest of the city, so that would be a, approximately about a $6,000 impact to the city's budget. Um, the rest of the contract are really language-oriented um, changes um, and that have real no budget impact. Okay. Thank you. Comments from Council? Hearing at this time, open up agenda item number eight for citizens' comments. Hearing on back to Council? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, revised IAFF contract. Second. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Montanero, second by Councilman Osmer. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Lenore. Councilman Gott? Yes. Vice Mayor Brimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Councilman Montanero? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item nine, discuss, take action on a request for proposal for solid waste services. Courtney. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, this staff is included in the agenda at the RFP we would like to release with regards to um, solid waste services in the city. Um, our current uh, contract expires with um, waste management on May 31st, 2016, and while we do have a extension um, ability, we thought it prudent to go ahead and um, uh, solicit proposals to determine if we could you know, make sure that we stay competitive. Um, the RFP that's included, um, we did retain a consulting um, firm to assist us in the preparation and of, of this RFP as well as the preparation of the contract and move it, help us through the RFP process. Um, that consulting firm is here. Um, if you have any questions, um, where's the Redmonds? There, that, okay. <laughs> um, and uh, so if you have any questions, we'll be glad to answer. Um, one question. Um, so this time we're going out for proposal, then you and I talked. We're going to do a contract and then an ordinance? Right. So um, most in, the, in our city right now, we have the um, waste management agreement by ordinance. Um, most cities have both a contract and an ordinance. Um, so we would like to do that. So, so we'd be revising the ordinance significantly once, once this is completed. So the ordinance would be more for what we talked about, that it would be the ordinance, the people. My opinion would be directed mostly to our relationship with the residents and how we would like them to handle, you know, their trash. <laughs> um, and then the contract would be uh, outline our relationship with the, with the contractor. Okay, great. Further questions? Okay. At this time, open up for public comment agenda item nine. Joanne Regan, city resident. Um, I just wanted to um, give my opinion of waste management. I um, am also on the board of the uh, Mayorka Homeowners Association, and we've been really pleased with the service that we get from waste management. I think they're very responsive. I've seen them, like, if something falls, you know, they, they get out of the truck, they make sure they pick up all the pieces. One time a, uh, a piece of glass somebody had put from a storm door, and when it went into the compactor, it shattered. Guy got out, and he broomed it up. He took up every single piece of glass. I mean, he was meticulous about it, and I, I just feel like they've done a really good job. And I, when we call for special pickups, they don't always come as quickly as you like, but they do They do come, and um, put in my vote of confidence. I don't have experience with any other company, but I have liked waste management. Thank you. Thank you very much. Floor is still open for public comment. Here are none. Close public comment. Back to council. Council comments. Move to approve the uh, RFP for solid waste services. Second. I have a motion by council. Okay. okay. RFP number 1516-03. Second. Okay. So I have a motion by Councilman God, second by Vice Mayor Brimer. Further discussion from council? Councilman Lenore? Councilman Montanero? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Brimer? Yes. Councilman Gott? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes, motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 10, discuss, take action on the local funding agreement between the State of Florida Department of Transportation and the City of Satellite Beach concerning State Road A1A resurface and project. Courtney? Thank you, Mayor. The, um, on your agenda tonight is the agreement um, solidifying the funding uh, relationship for the State Road A1A project. As you recall, we have requested numerous um, improvements that go along A1A um, to be included in the 2016 resurfacing project. Um, luck luckily, <laughs> um, and through our hard work, the only um, item that we'll be actually paying for is the um, mast arm changes for the intersections. Um, and that total is $382,800 from the Community Redevelopment Trust Fund. Um, we have budgeted $400,000 for that, so it is under budget. Uh, this local funding agreement um, is the way, the preferred manner of um, paying for this with DOT, and that um, with this, if the money or if the improvements actually cost more um, than what we have transferred to DOT, then they will make up the, the brunt of that. 
Um, there's another way to do that with a, a joint participation agreement in which it's the other way. We felt with rising construction costs that this might be a more prudent way to go. So um, we agreed on this. DOT was fine with that. Um, so with your approval, um, you know, we would recommend approval. Thank you. Um, I just want to say one thing to Courtney. Thank you very much. Um, I sat in quite a few meetings with our city manager, and you can tell she's worked very well with other people uh, outside of our city because when you go to these meetings, she gets things done. They've worked well with her, and we were shocked when we first got there at the first meeting. We weren't going to get really anything we were anticipating get and really promised to get. And uh, thank you. The work was great, and I think the project, the plans that I've seen, I think A1A is going to look really nice. So thank you for it. Council comments? Okay. This time open up agenda item 10 for public comment. Here none. Back I'll to the council. Make motion. a motion to approve the locally funded agreement with FDOT. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Montanero, second by Councilman Osmer. Further discussion? Here none. Councilman Gullah? Yes. Vice Mayor Brimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Councilman Montanero? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Certainly thank you very much. Moving on to uh, item 11, discuss, take action on the city's participation in the purchase of playground equipment at Surfside Elementary School. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in, right after I started working here, actually, in late 2013, um, we were contacted by um, the Surf, uh, Surfside Elementary parent-teacher organization, President Shauna Gardner, and she was asking, basically, you know, can, we ha can you help assist us purchasing this playground equipment? Um, and unfortunately, at the time, we were in a pretty bad financial position. At this point in the, in the city's um, finances, we, we are able to assist with that. Um, partnering with schools like this are, is a really good financial advantage to the city in that we get a community resource that we do a one-time payment for. We don't have to maintain. We don't have any liability on <laughs> and so on. So um, in this instance, um, the surf, surf side Elementary playground is open. It's not fenced in, so our community is um, able to access it. My kids play over there all the time. Um, so we would like to go ahead and um, approve this purchase. They have submitted their invoices um, for the playground that they are purchasing, so we understand that it, is, it will, you know, it's underway, and we have that documentation. So with that, we would, um, we would uh, recommend um, funding that at a cost of $25,000. Um, they're the cost of the playground equipment they're looking for is around 50000 if I'm not mistaken. Um, we did question why the school board isn't participating in this, um, and we did actually um, request the school board to start participating in uh, elementary school playgrounds, which they have, have agreed to look at next budget year. Unfortunately, that is not until July, and the playground equipment over at Surfside is to the point where they have to basically take it down. So um, we would recommend uh, moving forward with the funding of this. Thank you. I, um I think it's a, it's a great idea. That's a great playground. It's an open school there. And the number of people that use it and use the facility back there is great. And we've always had great working relationship with the school. The baseball field, well, before it was out, it was a football field and a baseball field. And you know, we use their property and we've gotten along great. And it's a good working relationship. And I think it's a wonderful thing. Move to approve $25,000 from the Recycling Trust Fund for the installation of new playground equipment at Surfside Elementary. Second. I have a motion by Councilwoman God, second by, I'll use Vice Mayor Brian right now. Um, at this time, I'll open it up for public comment on agenda item 11. Hearing none, back to Council. <laughs> Council, any further comments? Lenore? Councilman Osborne? Yes. Vice Mayor Brimer? Yes. Councilman Montanero? Yes. Councilman God? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes. Thank you guys very much. <laughs> Great school. Since I won. <laughs> okay, thank you, and staff, thank you. Um, moving on to agenda item 12, discuss, take action on city council goal setting for 2016. Councilwoman Scott was nice enough to prepare some items here. Um, so, so anybody can start. One thing I'd just like to add, and I think it really goes around along with the city administration services, I would really like to see us upgrade 
the computer systems and the, so the software systems that we use. Mm -hmm. I, I think today, if someone comes in to get a building permit stuff, I, I think there's more things that people can do online, the better it is for us. And if you walk across the hall and you see all the paper that's been collected for all the years and what we're going to have to do at some point to get it in a safer format, um, I'd like to start at least now so that from here forward, the stuff's already scanned and in some kind of document. We can manage the system from no matter where anybody's at, home, from our website. They can sign up for recreation. I know we can kind of do that now. But building permits everything. I would just like to see the system upgraded. Because when we walk in that room there and you see all that paper, and I understand we can't make that a goal because that would be really tasking our staff for a year. But I don't want to pile up anymore. So I think that kind of maybe goes with your number two. But I think is, that, is this uh, different from these two software programs that are mentioned here? I don't, I, you know, I, I glanced over because I got this this afternoon before we got here, and I just had been talking to Courtney on the, the, the paper in there bothers me because I think we're, the longer it stays there unscanned, the longer the there's a chance of something yeah. go wrong. So I don't want to create more of it. And I was thinking, okay, what can we do in the city? I mean, we've got so many things going on in the city this year with Roosevelt, the skate park, and tons of things that are goals that they can accomplish without stressing them, make an impact. And so are you talking just scanning all of these documents, or are you talking about something else? I'm talking about scanning being part of it. And, uh, you know, the other part being building permits. Why can't somebody fill out a permit online? Okay, that's the citizen yeah. service mm -hmm. Again. Will that do it? Yeah. yeah. The we currently scan every all of our records now that are, that come into the city. So we have that process in place. Um, it's the old stuff that's the problem, and then also the new applications. Like um, we scan it, but um, it, it, it's going to the citizen serve software for building and um, business tax receipts will automate it way better than what we do now. So that's kind of captured here. Um, the, what, what we have here that's listed that um, Councilwoman got put on here is doable this year. Scanning the old stuff, I don't think it's doable this year. The clerk's office is going to be very much weighted down with the transition of um, build business tax receipts as well as the website. I just don't see us being able to do the records issue this year. I just don't see that happening. Yeah, we talked about yeah. that. I just don't want that to be out of sight, out of mind at some point down the road, that the system we have can handle doing it at the time mm -hmm. that we get. Yeah. I mean, and um, Lenore has had this, that goal on since I've been here. Um, the problem with it is she's got too much in her department that she's doing. So we're trying to ease some of that out of there. And until she gets that out of there, she's never going to have time to, you know, so um, that's part of the strategy, though. That's one of the end goals. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. When you have a of services, do you want to say uh, continue uh, the program of scanning the old, uh, old documents or however we would word it without implying that it has to be the it has to be completed this year. I'm fine even just leaving now because it's understood. Okay. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure we're, we're keeping up to modern times with our software uh, to run the administrative end of our city. I think Lenore wanted to clarify something. Okay. Um, currently, I mean, more recently we destroyed 20 boxes mm -hmm. um, in this last month. So we are beginning to make a dent um, with the uh, collaborative effort of uh, support services. Um, Anissa was very instrumental in trying to review some of the documentation, um, getting all, all uh, staff members on board with the forms, with what's required, with verification. Um, there are documents that don't necessarily need to be scanned because there's, there's a retention schedule that can allow for them to be destroyed and not have this scanning necessity. So we are moving in the right direction, for sure. It, it's definitely a process. It's not, it's not as easy as somebody just sitting on a computer and scanning it. Yeah. So you've got to know what you're scanning so you can properly label it. Um, and then you have the, the records laws require us to have another person come after that and check it and create a, a filing system for it. So 
it's a little bit more involved than what you would initially think of when you're thinking about scanning documents. So, Lenore, when you said you uh, destroyed 20 boxes, yes. are these box documents that had already been scanned? Those are, are were the old paper documents from support services. That this no longer need to be uh, right. Exactly, exactly. In accordance with Florida State law. law. Is that the correct? retention schedules that, that on the record, yes. because you know where that's going. <laughs> okay. it, there's the uh, general schedule that um, identifies the recommended timeline along with the itemization um, for that retention for that particular subject matter. And we have it on the forms, we schedule it appropriately, and um, we were able to get rid of a lot of old documents that were no longer needed. And um, it does it, yes, required. required by state law. Thank you. Okay. So, lest any further items, you want to go over them, Council Dr. because you. Uh, yeah, what I did. Um, the city manager sent us all an email in which she uh, described uh, goals that the staff has set, and each of those is incorporated into this document. Um, I also went by the 2015 um, uh, goals, and uh, we made really good progress on those, and some of them uh, still remain, so I put those in here. And then, since this was my submission, um, <laughs> Uh, there were a couple that I did add. I would really like to see uh, staff trained on uh, doing that beach caster. Um, and um, there were, I also put in here that we need to publish an end of your beach caster article on the accomplishments of our 2016 goals. Um, I, I just don't think that we can give out enough information to our residents on all the things that are being accomplished. Uh, and then um, also uh, one of my goals was to establish Veterans Day as an official city holiday, so I have that in here. And um, I also uh, have in here that ensure that all board members are familiar with the city board's handbook so that they know where to look for answers to all of their questions about board proceedings um, this is a particular frustration of mine after the, all of the months that I spent <coughs> preparing that handbook that I guarantee you answers every single question that can be asked about any board and its proceedings. And I still repeatedly hear, well, they didn't know what to do. Well, they didn't know what to do. So um, I really want to make sure that they're really introduced to that handbook so they'll know where to look when they don't know what to do. Okay. So, let me ask a question to staff. Looking over these goals, are they obtainable? Are they too much for the city to, you know, make an, an effort here? Staff has um, agrees with everything except for the conduct quarterly town hall meetings. I think we we try to move away from the quarterly meetings into grouping them <coughs> into one year, and then we do all the sections of the city like within a month. Remember how we did it last I like year? It. I think that worked yeah. more effectively. Yeah. So yeah. we might want to instead of just take out the word quarterly and maybe do annual. Mm -hmm. You know, because when we did the town hall meetings quarterly, um, the whole city would be notified, but then you'd get five or ten people. You know, when you do it annually, you have a lot to, to say, and people have a lot to say, so they're, you know, they're more willing to come out for that. I think so what we did annual town hall meetings with residents in different sessions. Is that yeah, I think that the, what we did last year, when we came up with work rate, we never had that good a turnout that we did. I think at those meetings, and that was great. We came up with the sustainability board out of that, mm -hmm. and I think it was great contact. So it, al it also it also provided, you know, our ability to now what we can do this year is. From the meetings from last year, we now have what happened in 2015 that we can share with people. We have Roosevelt going on. We have A1A coming up. There's a lot of different things that are happening in the city that we're going to be able to articulate to the residents when we have these meetings. So I, I think doing them in that short verse that we did last year is probably the, yeah. the more effective way of doing it. Because it puts people right at the beginning of the year knowing what's gone on and what's going to happen. 
So we, we were looking at the April time frame for the next round. Um, we thought that would be good because Roosevelt would be well underway. Escape, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. May ish. Hmm. Whenever right. the mayor's right. here. Right. Okay. Right. Um, and then and then it would be close enough to where we're going into budget so we could get their ideas for the budget for next year, which would be, you know, good timing that way that from works. a budget start standpoint. I, I was just going to add one underneath that communication. Somehow, I'm not sure on the wording, but to make ourselves available for organizational meetings, you know, we had like the Lions Club asked, could we come talk to them? Maybe homeowners associations or like Montecito, when they have those type of meetings, even if we don't all go, but if some of us are available to go to those organizations to do the same thing. Like, so we've had the Lions Club have already asked us, hey, could you come and, and do a, you know, a small brief, not like the whole thing before, but just make ourselves available for those types of, of meetings so that we can do those updates. Um, I think you only get more word out. You'll have, Obviously, you'll have attendance because they're all going to be there for that specific meeting anyway, so you're almost guaranteed yeah. an audience yeah. there. But like I said, since we have been asked by like the Lions Club yeah, and that. Doing the, just to let you know, the Lions Club is March, like March 15th. So I, I said just maybe something, you know, I don't know exact worrying how we want to say that, but as we're talking about communication out there to talk about be available for clubs, organizations, or whatever. Do you really see that as a city goal as opposed to individual council members making this? No, I think, I think yeah. everybody see, and, and if they want to have some of the city staff, staff there or departments, or they may have a specific question or something like that. Like I said, I'm not saying we all have to go, but I think we should be available to address those and, and make that a point to go to those organizations to do that. That just gives another avenue for communication. A lot of them work very closely with the City Alliance mm -hmm. Clubs and a lot of things that are they do. And I think the more right. we stay in contact. And I think we've heard we, they have homeowners associations. I know, you know, Montecito was another one. I've got, not, I still get great response from some of those people up there that, that enjoyed how much we came up there and talked to them. So as opposed to maybe just going there for the whole city thing, maybe attend one of those things. I just thought that would be another way to yeah. get some communication out there. Okay, how about uh, provide speakers from the council or city staff to speak to community to, to speak to community organizations upon request? Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. Thank you. Okay. Um, All right, thank you. Anything else would like to be added? Okay, at this time, because it's an agenda item, I'll open it up for public comment. Hearing them back to council. Do we need a motion or do we want to just have a consensus? Uh, I just wanted to say real quick that usually you guys talk about your goals, then I go write it up, and then I present it to you. Councilman got rewrites it, and then we have to. It takes two or three meetings to do that. And since she did this, we're going to get it done in one meeting. So thank you. Consensus <laughs> or do you want a motion? I move that we adopt the. City Council goals for 2016 as amended. Thank second. you. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Gott, second by Councilman Montanero. Further discussion? Oh. I'm sorry, who moved to second at that? Uh, Gott, Montanero. Okay. Um, Councilman Osmer? Yes. Vice Mayor Brimer? Yes. Councilman Montanero? Yes. Councilwoman Gott? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes. Motion passes. And uh, Lorraine, thank you very much. You're welcome. And I'll make these changes. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, Lorraine. Thank you. Move on to agenda item 13. Discuss, take action, appointment of members to the Charter Review Committee. Courtney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as we discussed earlier in earlier meetings, we are looking at um, creating a charter review committee for the upcoming election, um, basically to see if we wanted to make any changes to our charter prior to the upcoming election in November. Um, therefore, we need to go ahead and start appointing that committee now. Um, we did decide um, in previous meetings that you would be, each of you would appoint one member and then we would appoint two alternates. Um, I have suggestions for the two alternates when you're ready for that, um, but it's all yours. Thank you. The way the process is, is each council member appoints a individual. Okay. And so 
At this time, I'll start. Councilman Gott? I'd like to appoint John Fergus. Okay. I'd like to appoint Paul DeMauro. I'd like to appoint uh, David Almer. Mike Chase. And I'll appoint David Schechter. So we need two alternates. Your recommendation? Uh, Bill Spiegelhalter has agreed to serve, if you so choose, as well as Jeff Chestine. He has also agreed to serve. Okay. Bill Spiegelhalter, Jeff Chestine. 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 Thank you. Do you need a motion to that effect on those names? Do we need I'm, a motion? Yeah, I would say so. I'm fine with all of those names. Just. You know, so, with the two people additional. Okay. So moved. Okay, so I have a motion by Vice Mayor Brian. Second. I have a second by Council Montanero to accept the list presented. This time open up for public comment. Joanne Regan, um, city resident. I think that would be a great board. I know all of them except for Jeff. Um, but I would encourage the board, just as I know you all uh, reach out to encourage young people, I also think that, uh, I'm not talking about myself, but I think that we could use a little estrogen on that board. <laughs> and uh, please consider that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment is still open. I hear you, Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> Here and no further. Thank you, Joanne. Well, the comments close. Any further comments from council? I would like to be appointed the uh, council liaison to that board. Okay. And this, it's not a board. It's just it's a committee. It's committee. Do we have? We, let me just ask this from our sort of handbook. Do we appoint to committees? It's news to me. Uh, okay. I, I have no problem with it personally, but we all can attend those meetings, correct? So they are going to be noticed. So right. Is that council? Okay. Yeah. One more. Okay. Um, Councilman Gaw. Yes. Councilman Osmer. Yes. Councilman Montanaro. Yes. Vice Mayor Brimer. Yes. Mayor Catino. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 14, Let's back here. Um, our proposed regular meeting for January 20th agenda items. As always, um, please get with Courtney if there's any addition to the items listed here. I'm, I'm going to be in Tallahassee on the 20th. I won't be at the meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right. Again, if there is any thing that needs to be added, you know, like on it, please see staff. We just added four items to that agenda today at staff meeting, so be kind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And if they include staff members, um, can we always have them, when we do the packet, have them up front, yeah. up front so they don't have to hang around until the end? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Is that good with everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on to agenda item 15, appointments to boards. Make a motion to appoint Kelly Place to the Recreation Board, Palace to the Recreation Board. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Montanero, second by primary member. Primary member, I'll primary take member of the Recreation Board. A motion by Montanero and a second by Councilman Gott. Uh, any further discussion? Here and none. Lenore? Councilman Osborne? Yes. Vice Mayor Brimer? Yes. Councilman God? Yes. Councilman Montanero? Yes. Mayor Catino? Yes, motion passes. So just a question to clarify, the sustainability, what happened there was we appointed six and we were supposed to appoint seven. Yes. Is that the correct? Okay. That's correct. Okay. So when you create the the, act, the the permanent board, you're going to have seven regular members and two alternates, as well as an expert liaison. So there's three openings, really. Coming Let me up. ask this question there. From the original list, when we did the board, mm -hmm. do we still have names? Was there any other names there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
There's actually one lady forthcoming to be interviewed in February. Mm -hmm. That's great. So I want to make sure a great board. So, okay. Any further? We have es estrogen on that one. We did. <laughs> We're adding it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Don't forget it. Moving on to agenda item 16, uh, adoption of minutes for the December 2nd, 2015 regular meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the December 2nd, 2015 meeting minutes as submitted. Second. Motion by Councilman Montanaro, or by Montanaro, second by Councilman Osmer. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Lenore? Councilman McGaugh? Yes. Vice Mayor Brimer? Yes. Councilman Osmer? Yes. Councilman Montanaro? Yes. Mayor Patino? Yes. Any further business before the council? Just one thing. Yeah. Hey, again, nice job on the ladies that put together. It makes it so easy to follow, so thank you. That's the norm. <laughs> thank you, Lenore. Any further business? Here and none. Happy New Year, everybody. Be nice to Look at this. I'm out of town that day. Do what? Do what?